Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It's now Friday, May 15th, 2020, and we have a lot to talk about already. Yep, Invest Area 90L, that is the, I guess, biggest story, for the lack of a better way to put it. In the Straits of Florida down there, that's the Red X, National Hurricane Center indicating an 8 and 10 shot that this goes on to develop into a tropical or a subtropical storm sometime over the next few days. The recon flight that was scheduled to go out and investigate this today has been canceled for now. So I guess it's been postponed. Canceled for today, postponed to a different day. And there's all kinds of rain and squalls and just kind of miserable conditions down there uh, in the southern part of the peninsula, the Florida Straits, northern Cuba. And uh, in fact, let's take a look at that on uh, weather radar real quick. I forgot to pull this up again, second day in a row. I'm slacking. Uh, but you know what? It's easy to just go grab it. And I should bookmark it and whatever. Anyway, it doesn't look too bad down here. Um, just kind of showery. You know, it's not a real big problem. In fact, there's been a lot more rain over in portions of Louisiana over here associated with a non-tropical system entirely. This isn't really tropical either. It's trying to get there, but um, just kind of showery from time to time. You need the rainfall down here, though, and you could actually use some up along the panhandle and portions of Alabama. You might have seen those wildfires that have been raging in those areas. But for now, South Florida, uh, parts of the Bahamas having some rain, but nothing major. It's not a really big problem. And you can see even on the vorticity signature here, yes, it's starting to increase uh, for the most part, but it's still kind of oblong. Let's get a little thicker, uh, what we call stroke there in printing. A line is called the stroke, and if you draw a line around something, that's the stroke, and when you fill it in, that's called the fill. Anyway, graphic design talk. Um, this area down here, it looks like a bean. You know, it's still linear. It's long. It's not concentrated yet, but it's trying. Some of that energy is trying to focus like right in here, but it's still broadly, um, well, what am I trying to say? Loosely organized, and we can see that even better on the satellite animation here. We can zoom in on it. And you can tell uh, the wind field with it spread out over a fairly large area here. And it's going to take some time. That's what these early season or early, well, it's not even the season yet, but these early before the season starts storms do. They take their time. They're generally spread out, kind of sprawling, kind of messy looking. Not your classic development as you would expect in August or September. Nevertheless, breezy conditions, gale force winds down there, not a good day to be out on a small boat. So just hang out inside if you're in Miami or down in the Keys or parts of the Bahamas there, especially the Northwest Bahamas. Just let this get on past. It'll take a couple of days. And then um, the concern will be for some increase in rip currents along the southeast coast and maybe some direct impacts up here for the Outer Banks. Yeah, let's take a look at the GFS. This is from the 12Z run today. And to give you an idea of what the players on the field are, this is our disturbance right here. Nice area of high pressure that has built over the top. Uh, the Western Atlantic Ridge ridging in over the Southeast United States. So this system is kind of trapped down here, milling around, taking its sweet time. Water temperatures just about marginal. 78, 79, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, not a whole lot of upper ocean heat content. So it's it's got a little bit to work with. That's why we only have hurricanes really June through November. Yes, there's been two instances um, with Alma. I think that was, what, 1970? And then more recently, a hurricane in January a few years ago. But that's a real big outlier anomaly most hurricanes form, you know, all the rest, June through November. So these preseason storms are just kind of like, eh, think of it as um, like a preseason, it doesn't count, kind of NFL game, whatever. You get the idea, or an exhibition game in college basketball. Remember when we used to have sports? I do. Anyhow, that's what it looks like in the GFS. So now let's run it out in time. There's the energy trying to get together still. This is a big key to me 
as to how this energy bundles. And notice it definitely seems to track closer to the Carolina coast there. And then it kind of gets pin in, uh, pivoted in with this uh, upper level feature that's trying to dig in here. You see that right there. Complex pattern overall, but this is an interesting change. It really starts to get going there um, towards Monday, Monday morning through the afternoon. So that's interesting. Uh, maybe some windy conditions, breezy, showery along the coast from Cape Fear up to Cape Lookout and Cape Hatteras, all the way down to, you know, maybe even parts of the low country up to Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. Uh, so if you're heading out to the beach, if your beach is open and you're going to enjoy the surf, be careful, be mindful, go to weather.gov. Remember, that's what I showed you right here. That's that site right there, weather.gov. And like if you wanted to click on the Cape Fear region, for example, or you know your zip code, you see these hazardous weather outlooks? Read them. Talk about it. Or t they talk about it. Learn about it. I'm having trouble speaking today. It's okay. My mind is all over the place with all kinds of exciting things coming up. And so I'm not completely here, as they say. <laughs> but yes, use this resource, weather.gov. Um, you see this weather story? Lots of good information here. All right, and this is from the local, look, that's what it says right there. See, you don't believe me? There it is, southeast, North Carolina, northeast South Carolina. This is the close-up of what we would expect in this area, not just a broad perspective that you would see with just utilizing the National Hurricane Center. That's a larger scale. This is your small-scale information, dangerous rip currents, etc., swells, um, Otherwise, and I like how they're optimistic, beautiful weather is expected with highs in the 80s and mostly sunny skies. All right. See, it's not all bad news. This, though, could be bad news. We'll have to see how it pans out. We're looking at the potential for a cyclone to develop and using the simulated infrared brightness temperature. It's another way to kind of use computer modeling to show what the cloud cover might look like. Uh, the infrared cloud cover there and this is amazing that we're able to look at this you got to admit so this is um, over in the Bay of Bengal headed up towards Bangladesh and maybe um, Myanmar Burma whatever um, it just depends on which way you want to go with what you want to call that country and um, there could be a significant cyclone next week so let's run this out in time as well a different perspective than we're used to seeing I uh, just started really utilizing this recently as a suggestion from one of the folks that commented on YouTube. I appreciate that. So over the next few days here, this is 96 hours out, a fairly substantial cyclone. Got an eye there in the modeling, moves right up into Bangladesh. And as we know, that could produce a significant storm surge, especially on that right-hand side. So we're going to watch this closely. I will talk about it each day uh, that we're having to face this threat over there. That could be a real problem, and we have to make sure people are aware. There's a lot of stuff going on. We know what that is. The weather isn't going to stop just because we're dealing with this pandemic, so we have to be aware of all that. All right, I talked about this recently. I'm almost sold out of these. The big old hurricane tracking charts for the year 2020. Look at that. I'll back up to give you a sense of scale. Nice and large, full color. Uh, as I said yesterday, I drew that map in Adobe Illustrator long time ago, 15 years ago, maybe more than that. And I've produced these for media outlets and corporations, and I'm selling them, uh, just a few of them. I had a bunch of extras left over. I printed up some for our patrons, and then I had some that were left over, so I figured I'd use uh, this as an opportunity to raise a little bit a little bit of gas money while giving you something cool i mean that's a really neat map come on you can track it on your iphone with apps or your computer my phone's plugged in i almost pulled it out of the charger you know you can track them on here uh but this is the old school that's the way to do it that's how i did it when i was in college and then when i was a kid and you can have one there will be a link in the description you can purchase it through paypal and we've had several people that did that yesterday. I appreciate that. I'm shipping them soon. I'm going to wait until they all come in. Then I'm going to ship everything out on Monday. And there's, I think I've got six left in my stock back there. And that's it. Then they're all gone. All right? 
So there you go. That is it for me for today. Have a great rest of your Friday and a great weekend ahead. I will be here throughout the weekend doing these updates. So look forward to that, I guess, if you like hearing about the weather. If you don't, tune me out. That's fine. But otherwise, yeah, I'll be here and we'll keep discussing what's coming up in the tropics. And by the way, today's the official start of the East Pacific hurricane season. Not that it really matters, but there you go. They had a depression several weeks ago and their season got started early. Why not? It's 2020, right? Anyway, that is it for me. As always, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Stutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again over the weekend.